Isaiah 34 and verse 1. I want you to be prepared mentally. That's why we spend so much time in this book reading. You go to, you go to high school and do what? Get a diploma, right? You go to college and do what? Get a degree, right? And all those diploma and degrees, you get a good job if you're educated. Mm -hmm. So if you go into your church, you should be educated. Mm -hmm. Once you're educated and understand what to do, guess what? You're going to get a good job in the kingdom. What you ask most people today, quote, ask them, what are the Ten Commandments? And those are the things we're going to be judged on. They can barely quote four of them. And they swear they love Jesus. And those commandments we're going to be judged off of. But this is the war I'm getting right here when the Lord is coming. Verse 1, go ahead. Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken. Yes, sir. Ye people, let the earth hear and all that is therein, mm -hmm. the world and all things that come forth of it. We want them all of them to come near and hear this. Everybody should hear this. How is he making them hear it today? You read the book. But if you're not reading, you can't hear it. Go ahead. For the, for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. Mm -hmm. He has utterly destroyed them. He has delivered them to the slaughter. He's very angry. He's delivered them up. He's going to call them up in all in one place to kill them all at one time. Go ahead. Their slain also shall be cast out, mm -hmm. and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. And the mountain shall be melt with their blood. What well, I ain't never heard of this before. When I was in church, Sunday church, this Jesus doing all this. Go ahead. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, mm -hmm. and all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth off from the vine. What he said? Then he said the sun gonna be dark, and the moon not gonna give a light, and the stars gonna fall from heaven. The, the, the cloud, the, the heavens, right, as you see it today, it's going to be destroyed. It's three heavens right here in the Bible he talks about. It talks about the first heaven you're standing on, the second heaven with the stars, the moon, and, and the third heaven where God is. God and the Father, I mean Jesus and the Father and the angels. That's going to be destroyed. He, you will actually see the Father and Son sitting on their throne. He said, I'm going to destroy that. So you're going to know who doing this to you. That's why he said that heaven shall be dissolved. I want you to see who I am. The mm -hmm. one they said, oh, he's not coming back. Oh, yeah, he's coming back. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. What are you doing up in the heavens? Go ahead. And as a falling fig from the fig tree, mm -hmm. for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Wait a minute. He said, for my sword shall be bathed. You know what bathed is? Sharpen. He's sharpening it for something. For this war I'm getting. Go ahead. Behold, it shall come down upon Abdullah mm -hmm. and upon the people of my curse to judgment. These Abdullah, these are the fake Jews over there in the land today who call it themselves us. So don't be in the land too soon because when Christ hit, he comes straight to Jerusalem and put his feet on the Mount of Olives to crush it. And the Mount of Olives is in Jerusalem. Everything in Jerusalem will be destroyed. That's why you got to know his plan, know what he's doing, so you be in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of our brothers and sisters that went over there in their land waiting on this time. And I said, they can't be reading the book. That ain't the right time to be in that land. He said, I'm going to deal with the ones that calling you, calling them you. You my Israelites. Go ahead. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. Filled with what? Blood. This is when he come back for the war. He battled with all those nations he called up. Go ahead. It is made fat with fatness. Yes, sir. And with the blood of lambs and goats. Mm -hmm. With the fat of the kidneys of ram. Mm -hmm. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Bozrah and a great slaughter in the land of Adullam. Now, this ain't just, these are not talking about animals. He's talking about somebody. He's talking about people. Well, he's going to kill a lot. I guess the animals are going to be involved in it. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. 
Wait a minute. They said, he said, it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, meaning that he's coming back for revenge. That's right. For not accepting him, this is what's going to go down with this land. We got to know this. If we don't know this, we're going to be a part of this killing. I don't want to be a part of this killing. I want to be protected. The Lord said he's going to be, he's going to settle all the fighting when he comes. That means he's going to settle it all. Let's look at that. Let's go to Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12. You got to understand this. Armageddon. Before we get to Armageddon, we got to go through this great tribulation. And that's going to be three and a half years. And you saw in Matthew chapter 24, he said, I'm coming immediately after the tribulation. Meaning after those six trumpets are blown, then the seven trumpets, God said, I'm coming back. Now I'm need to get in this little battle. I want to fight. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12. Go ahead, brother. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Mm -hmm. And lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of air. And the moon became as blood. You notice that's our clue when he's coming back. After all this happened, the sun is dark and the moon is dark. And then he said, I mean, he said he's coming when that time is ha when that time happened. That time hasn't happened yet. Go ahead, brother. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, mm -hmm. even as a fig tree casts her untimely feet. Yes, sir. When she is shaken of a mighty wind. This time ain't happened yet. The stars want to fall to her. What do you mean by star? You ever seen a meteor fall? Parts of the little star that's meteor falling to the earth. We've seen this happen a few times before in history if you do some history. He said the stars are going to fall. It's going to be all over now, but I guarantee you going to be a bunch of them. Because he got to destroy all this man creation. All of it. Go ahead. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Yes, sir. And every mountain and island was moved out of their places. Ain't nobody ever seen this time. He said the heaven has moved back. You can actually see who's doing it. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondsman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. Why are they hiding themselves? He said the kings of the earth, that's your presidents. Russia, Trump, Putin, all them people. All these people be called kings. That's even the entertainers, Beyonce, all these people, Jay Z, all the ones that we know, the king, Farrakhan, which you're talking about, Nation of Islam, all these kings hid themselves because they didn't know that this was going to happen. They thought it was fake. They hide themselves. You can't hide from the Lord. Go ahead. And what they say? 16. Uh -huh. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. How did he see him? He said the heavens were destroyed. It was a clear shot at the Father and the Son and the angels sitting there. He said, hide us from him. Mm. Ain't nobody thinking about this. Raise your hand if you heard this. Mm. Very few people heard of this. They hear this too. Israel started teaching this. Why? Because this doctrine will be done away. Say when 70 AD hit in Jerusalem, and they destroyed Jerusalem, the word of God has been preached all over the world. But he said, look, I want to make sure I leave a remnant, meaning a small portion, so you can hear it. But you got to be listening out for it. Come on. You can't get distracted of the world. Because if you care about you, yourself, and your family, you better be teaching them this. Because you're going to be trying to be hiding yourself. From him that sit on the throne. Go ahead. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Ain't very people gonna be, many people gonna be able to stand. That money in your pocket don't mean nothing. That car don't mean nothing. That house don't mean nothing. Nothing. Your retirement plan, your girlfriend, your husband, your boyfriend don't mean nothing if they're not in the right place at the right time. Come on. It don't mean nothing because you can't hide from it. Amen. But he protects his people. He protects his people. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. Let me show you something right quick about Jesus. Before Jesus, that all this destruction happened, he provided a way of escape. 
Hebrews 10 and verse 1. And the reason why I want to touch on Hebrews because most of the world get this confused with the law. You're doing away with the commandments. You're doing away with the Old Testament. And they don't understand this when you go into Hebrews chapter 10. So, yes, sir. Let me show you something here. He's our protection. And how do he protect us? By us going back to the Old Testament, reading the law, then coming back to the New Testament and reading the Testament. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, mm -hmm. and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the commerce thereon thereunto perfect. So if you go in there with a naked eye and read this, you would think you would assume he's talking about the commandments or the Old Testament. Most people do away with this law. And the law he's talking about is animal sacrifices. When Jesus died on the cross, he said the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. You don't need no more priests to go and sprinkle the blood upon the altar or the veil to get forgiven for your sins. You do this in your prophecy or your home, and you act by asking him, Father, forgive me, I have sinned. But back then, you had to go take an animal to the priest, and then he has to come between you and the Father and atone for your sin. Not no more. He said, look, I done away with those animal sacrifices. But jump down to verse 4. He'll tell you right here. Go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, mm -hmm. he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. He said, when he come into the world, who is he? Jesus, when he come into the world, he said, I don't need them sacrifices no more. You don't need to be coming, bringing me no animal sacrifice. Look, this is how you do it. You use my body, my blood. You ask for your forgiveness of your sins in Jesus' name. And this is not talking about the law or the commandments when you read this. Don't let them confuse you by this. That's why I come back and read. This is your protection right. to read the law and Jesus. understand what's going on. You got to. Jump down to verse 10 when you get it, brother. By the which, where we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ yes, once sir. for all. Once and for all. He died one time. He died the more for you. Once and for all. Go ahead. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. Now, is he talking about the laws of God or are you talking about animal sacrifice? Come on, brother. He's talking about animal sacrifice, not the law. Don't let them fool you in this area. Go ahead. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Yes, sir. From henceforth expected till his enemies became his footstool. He said, I sat down at the right hand and I'm waiting to make all these enemies bow to me. Let's see when this is going to happen. Let's go to Psalms 110. Let's see what Jesus means by returning back to heaven and he's going to make his enemies his footstool. Psalms 110 and verse 1. We're making sure you understand what these scriptures are talking about. Because this war on the getting, people do not understand this. They think this fiction. They think this fiction. No, Jesus ain't going to hurt nobody. He's going to be the main one sitting in your throat. He's going to be the main one. I'm going to show you right here. <laughs> Psalms 110 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. And the Lord is talking to his Lord. Who is this? This is the Father and the Son talking. Amen. He said, I'm going to make your enemies to your footstool. Go ahead. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Because Jesus is going to rule this earth in the midst of it. He's going to be strong. Jump down to verse 5. Go ahead. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Who is he talking about? Who sit at the right hand of the Father? 
Jesus, he sit at the right hand of the Father. Go ahead. He shall judge among the heathen. Mm -hmm. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. Wait, wait, wait. He shall judge among the heathen. And what is his job? To fill the earth with dead bodies. This is the war of Armageddon when Jesus Christ himself is going to fight. He's going to fill the earth with dead bodies. And he said he shall wound the heads over many countries. Hmm. Russia, Japan, China, France, all these countries, and the United States. He's going to bring them to their knees at this time. Because he gave them, he gave them a long time to get this stuff right. But now it's his time. Let me show you what's going to happen in that time. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7, and verse 1. Before Jesus does anything, he always protects his people. Yes. Before all that destruction, he hit God's love. I got a spot for my people. And my people understand where to be at the right time. But if you're concerned about this world and the goods of this world, you will never see it. You will never leave it. You will never see it. You need to worry about this war I'm getting. Don't be in this spot. It's a bad spot to be in if you're not in a place of safety. Revelation chapter 7. We're going to start with verse 1. And God always marked his people. He always. Go ahead. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Yes, sir. Holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now this is this, this not talking about wind as you see out there in the world. He's talking about nations. You can read Daniel chapter 7 and 2 and find out he's talking about the four winds of the European economic community or the Gentile dynasty or the Nebuchadnezzar sons. These the one we call Europeans who run the world. He said, I'm holding them back at a great time. Hmm. So they won't hurt the earth. It's a particular time that God wants the earth to be hurt. But before that happened, he said he's going to seal his people. Yes. Go ahead, brother. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Yes, sir. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. He said he cried out. He said, look, don't hurt the earth and the sea. Until what? Go ahead. Saying, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servant of our God in that forehead. How do you seal the servant of the God in the forehead? He looking inside of your brain. You see, do you understand what's going on? If you don't understand what's going on, guess what? He said, look, bypass them. Go to the next person that understand. That's why it's so important for us to read these scriptures. It ain't about Jesus. Now, he told you in Matthew chapter 24, he said, many shall come in my name and deceive many. You can holler at Jesus till the cows come home. Till the cows come home. He's not, he's not fooled by that. He's looking in your brain. As most people, they in here, but their brain is out there. A lot of people, they be in church, but their brain is elsewhere. And God said, I see you. I really see you. You think I'm looking on the olive here. I ain't looking on the olive here. I'm looking in your mind. Mm -hmm. You see what actually going on. And he's going to seal you if you're doing right. He said, hurt not the earth until I seal my service. That's right. Go ahead. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there was sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. These are, he's not just talking about only 144,000 are going to heaven like the Jehovah Witness preach. Now these are the leaders of each tribe which are also called, called all Israelite which we call African American. He have certain sectors of leaders who are leading congregation who are teaching them the right thing. And then from that point on once he teach them from Judah, Benjamin, Levi, all those 12 brothers, he got them today here. Who are teaching the people how to be in the right spot at the right time. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 9 to show you that it's not just 144,000 on this earth. Verse 9, go ahead. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, mm -hmm. of all nations and 
Kendricks and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and so, palms in their hands. So we got all these multitude of nation people coming and they are saved, they got white robes on. These are the ones that have been saved through the great tribulation. Jump down, let me show you something. Jump down to verse 13. Let's see that. Go ahead. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Like, who are these? we seen 144,000. Now, who are these in the white robes? Go ahead. And I said unto him, Sir, thy know it. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So we got to come out of great tribulation? These are the ones that were saved after the tribulation period has ended for three and a half years or 42 months or a time, time and a half a time, whichever way you want to put it. He said these are the ones that were saved through after the great tribulation. So, so much for people saying that all the 144,000 go to heaven. It's a great multitude of all people from all nations that's going to be saved. Amen. Now let's go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 1. Let's understand how the seal works. Let's understand how the seal works. Ezekiel 9 and verse 1. See if you got it. No, we're good right now. Alright, uh, yeah, go to Ezekiel 9. Yeah. This one. Jerusalem, 
set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. He said, go to the men who cry, and meaning that they are angry about homosexuality. They're angry about people eating swine and catfish. They're angry about Tyler Perry putting on them dresses. Because Deuteronomy chapter 22 and 5 says it's an abomination for a man to put on a woman's garment. But the world are laughing. When you're laughing at this thing, like, oh, no. He, he ain't got to see or she ain't got to see. They laugh. They entertain. They entertain. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 22 and 5. And tell you, these are abominations when you put a man put on woman's clothing and a woman put on men's clothing. That's abomination. Now, we ain't talking about you going through your house, putting on your husband's shirt. You know, and, uh, you, you know, stuff like that. Now we talking about people actually this transgender movement that's, right. that's going on right now. That's right. You can't decide between who's straight and who is gay. <coughs> Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city mm. and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. God said, Go kill them all. Let's see who you're going to kill that don't have it. You're going to be surprised. Go ahead. Slay utterly, old and young, mm -hmm. both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And began at my sanctuary, then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. This is the war I'm going to get he said, go through, kill, old, oh, young, children, whoever you can, that don't have the mark. And folks said, man, how can he kill kids? God know what that little kid going to grow up to be. He know if he righteous or not. Stop trying to think for God. Your ways are not his ways. He wrote this, and I'm dealing with it, I'm rolling with it, because I ain't got no heaven to hell to put you in. Do you got one to put me in? No. So we better roll with him. He's the boss. If you think you're the boss of your life, guess what's going to happen to you? Like a throw, throw here in my hair in the lake of fire because they think they got control over their life. You don't have control over your life. Mm -hmm. only, time, only time you have control of your life if you're doing what thus saith the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Defile the house, fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. Now understand, he's going to start with us. He's going to start with the nation of Israel because we are the leaders. He's going to start at the house of the Lord. Meaning that what we're doing, he's going to start with me. He's going to see what I'm doing, he's going to start with the congregation. Will start with then he's going to go to the nation. But look at what Ezekiel said when he's seen all this. Go ahead. And it came to pass while they were slaying them, and I was left. And I fell upon my face and cried and said, mm -hmm. Oh, Lord God, would thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Ezekiel said, when well, he showed him the vision of the future to write this book, he said, Oh, you don't kill all the Israelites? You know why? Because we are some of the hardest, headed people in the world. You tell them to do something, give them direction, guess what? I ain't got to do that. I ain't got to do that. They hard him. He said, follow the book. He said, look, Ezekiel cried. I said, man, are you going to kill all these life? He said, no, nah, I ain't going to kill them all, but it's going to be a very small food to make it. Very small. But this Israelite man and woman is really hard him. Now, that's, the, that's when Jesus sat upon the throne and doing this thing. But the thing is, right now, we're going to deal with before he comes back. Let's go to Revelation chapter 8 and 1. Let's see in detail about the destruction. It's Armageddon. We give you a little Armageddon, we're going to give you a little tribulation here. Revelation chapter 8 and 1. I get a lot of people mad at me. How that pastor know that? I'm reading. <laughs> These are not my words. I ain't telling you to turn to Jeff chapter 8. Did I tell you turn chapter, chapter? I told you turn to Revelation. These are God words. We just read it. Revelation chapter 8 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silent in heaven about the space of half an hour. Mm -hmm. And I saw the seven 
angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. See, this is the time of the great tribulation. That's going to happen in three and a half years, and he said he got to do something and follow what he already written over 2,000 years ago. This got to be fulfilled right here. Double down verse uh, 6. Let's look at a little bit of it. Go ahead. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Mm -hmm. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire.